There are danger signs in the Sahara Desert. The Pentagon believes this desolate place may be the next Afghanistan, a safe haven for terrorists plotting attacks against the West. I guess we're going to follow that white arrow, right, Bill? Past roads, past any other sign of civilization, we came upon a small military camp where the American and Algerian flags fly side by side. It was about a mile from here that we met Captain Mike. He's a Green Beret, a member of the U.S. Army Special Forces, the elite troops that represent just 2% of the Army. Their ability to go covert is critical to their work, so we are not allowed to use Mike's last name or show him and his men unless their eyes are covered. Same, same as yours. Captain Mike is the leader of a group of 12 Green Berets, a so-called A-team, that will work and live out here in the Sahara for two months. Just a week before arriving here, Mike took his team on military exercises in the German Alps, doing commando drills on skis and living in a snow cave. Here in the Sahara, he's working with a team of Algerian special forces. Mike and his team are the first U.S. soldiers to conduct military exercises in Algeria since the end of World War II. Now, they're in the point of showing us their techniques, mm -hmm. and then uh, we're going to go ahead and show, show ours then. Small special forces teams like this one are spread out across North Africa to confront what the Pentagon believes is an emerging threat. The mission, yes, yes. to train local militaries yes, yes. to deal with it. Push that, and then you're ready. Yeah. Algeria's desert commandos yep, are already among North Africa's most well-trained troops, and they have real experience. For the last decade, they've been fighting an insurgency here in Algeria. Out here, they show off some acrobatic desert drills and want to see if the Americans can do the same. He's going to walk with him and do it? Exactly. Okay, so he needs a question off him. Doing a flip with a fully loaded AK-47 isn't exactly typical work for the Americans. But he manages. The U.S. is also sharing some American technology, showing the Algerians the Raven, the smallest unmanned aerial vehicle used by the U.S. military. All right, it looks a little bit just like a model airplane. Pretty much. But uh, you've got a couple cameras here, right? Yeah, we've got, uh, right now we've got the day camera set up. We've got a front and a uh, side view. It's a Launched like a paper airplane, the Raven is flown by remote control and can provide real-time intelligence to a team working out in the middle of the desert. Critics of this program say that it's a waste of money and a waste of the time of America's special forces. They say there simply is no terrorist threat out here in the middle of the Sahara Desert. But Pentagon officials point to the case of Amari Saifi, known as the Bin Laden of the Sahara. He took 32 Europeans hostage three years ago here near Tamarnasset, Algeria. Saifi collected a reported ransom of $6 million and managed to elude authorities for nearly a year, traveling 2,000 miles across several national borders before finally getting captured in Chad. He was certainly a key figure, but the, his arrest is not enough to totally neutralize that element of the network down here. Emily Hunt is a terrorism analyst who came out to the Sahara to get a look at the Pentagon's counterterrorism program. Last year they issued a series of communiques, one of which was supporting Zarqawi's uh, jihad against the West. Another was applauding his kidnap and ultimate murder of two Algerian diplomats in Iraq. In fact, Algerians and other North Africans have also been found in the ranks of foreign fighters in Iraq and Afghanistan. But for Captain Mike, this is about more than fighting an immediate terrorist threat. It's about making friends in a country that is 99% Muslim and has had historically chilly relations with the United States. What the hell are you guys doing out in the middle of the desert? Because down 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 here we're away from everything and you find out that no matter what a soldier is what religion what country they're the same the same he says his men can learn from the algerians and in the process show some superpower humility we can't be so big as like americans say oh we're the best and da 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 no 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 no, no. hey we're, a man's a man a woman's a woman you gotta learn from everybody and in a world where terrorists are looking for new hiding places it doesn't hurt to have a few friends out in the desert
Thank you, my brother. Yeah. This is Jonathan Carl for Nightline in Tamanrasset, Algeria. Yes.